Welcome to Nick's Home Court with your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. This is episode number 76. Okay, let's breathe, let's all breathe a collective sigh of relief. KP is all right. <laughs> I have to say that. I have to chuckle a little too because when his foot got stepped on, I swear that whole first half of the Knicks game, I was numb. I was like, oh boy. I think I'm going to start reading college, uh, checking on college pro- prospects and doing podcasts on that because I don't know. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this looks bad. But then, you know, the optimist in me also said, you know what? I've twisted ankles like that. I've done that. And sometimes, sometimes if it doesn't stay in that, like, you know, I don't know anything about them. Not a doctor. I don't know anything about that. But like, I've had my ankle twist back like that. I've had that happen. And it's almost like if you don't stay in that position, like a second, it's like if, if it just really quick Sometimes you just get lucky and the ligaments don't get strained and you don't really have any real injury, just a little hurt and it swells up a little bit or you, you know, or sometimes it don't even swell up. I've had my heel stepped on and damn near my foot squished in half and yeah, you'll be limping, you'll be hurting for a little while, but no real structural injury. So that's, that's, that's pretty good. So it's been a few days since the podcast. I've been a little busy lately. Uh... But I was dying to get a podcast, so I'm giving you a podcast while I'm on the road right now. So it looks like it looked like the Knicks rallied, literally rallied around Chris Tapp's injury. It looked like the Knicks needed a win. They had an opponent they could beat, obviously. And it just looked like, it just felt like, at first, right immediately after the injury, it looked like the Knicks was about to start a fight, like a little bit, a little bit. You know, you know, you saw a little couple of files here and then, you know, and, and you know what? I like that. I like that. You hurt one of ours, we're going to hurt one of yours. See, first of all, that's not only old school basketball and old school Knicks, but it's just camaraderie. That's all. It's just camaraderie. We're in the field of battle. We're playing this game and one of our peoples got hurt. We don't care if it was a mistake. We don't care. When you go, see, back in the days now, I don't like the goon basketball, I got to say that. But back in the days, if you hurt another team's player, next time you're going for a layup, you're getting chopped. It just is what it is. And that is self-regulating, you know, because sometimes the refs can't catch everything. And that's how the game was self-regulating. You know, and that's important to have. You know, it's important to have self-regulation sometimes in the games. Baseball has it. I don't always agree with baseball because their their self-regulation is different. You know, in baseball, it's like, oh, you looked at your home run too long. I got to hit you with the ball. That's that's some stupid shit. To me, that's some stupid shit. But. If you did something to a player, like if you actually, like the last pitcher actually hit a player, you know, they'll hit you back. They'll do something back. Hockey has it too. That's why they let them fight. Also, I think that hurts the sport a little bit, but that's why they let them fight. You know, self-regulation. Football don't even need that because you know what? Next time down, you're getting hit. (laughs) So either way, you're getting hit. So there's no regulation needed in football. You know, but I'm just saying, so that's just something I remember from the past. And sometimes you need that. Because nowadays, if a player has a hand injury, and this happened back in the days as well, if a player had a hand injury, you know, they swipe on it. They hit it. They try to hit it. They try to hit you in the hand. That hurts. They, they do that. That's hurt. If, if, you know, that's just how it goes. However, again, with the self-regulation, if you did that, well, guess what? Oh, you got a, a little ankle injury. Somebody might cut you low. Somebody might do some shit back to you. And it may, it kept everyone in check. It kept everyone in check to a certain degree. Because if you look back, I can't go too far. Because if you look back in the 90s, it kept people in check until it was a fight. So that's why I am not mad that they took a lot of that away. But I do 
do think they don't allow the players to regulate within reason. We don't want them fighting. We don't want the Detroit, the thing that happened in Detroit. We don't want that. But a little hard foul here and there is not too bad. And it's just weird how the NBA does that. Like they call everything a flagrant. Everything's a flagrant. A hard foul. Even if you hit the ball before, it was like if you don't make a basketball play. Now, even if you make a basketball play but just happen to hit the guy's head, people don't understand these athletes are huge and you're going at a rate of speed that humans are not used to. And you swing at the ball and you happen to hit his head or hit his shoulder and you know it wasn't malicious. They know it wasn't malicious, but you know what? It got to be a tech because it looked bad. You know, so that's just how the game is now. You know, that's my little rant on that bullshit. But, uh, Knicks played a good game yesterday. It was a team effort. Welcome back, Ennis Cantor. Now nobody's even talking about Hernan Gomez. All that old, bring him off the bench. Where's a, a Free Willy? I'm not hearing a peep from the Free Willy crowd. This is what I try to tell people. Just be Knicks fans. Don't, I don't root for particular players. I root for the team. And Cantor's good for the team. I'm tired of people. Oh, I want to see this player and that player. Oh, this player's not playing, so I'm not going to watch. Then get the fuck out of here. Like I always say, I'm a Knicks fan. I root for the jersey. I root for the team. Sometimes my organization, the Knicks organization, does fucked up shit. And it's frustrating. And I hate it. And if I hate it enough, I won't watch. If I don't like what the team is doing, I won't watch. However, if I'm going to watch, I'm going to watch as a Knicks fan. Not as a Willie Hernan Gomez fan. Not as a Damian Dotson fan. Play the young guys. No, I want to win games. I want a product. I want to see a product that's entertaining. You see, people forget that basketball is a sport, but it's also entertainment. It's Broadway. It's literally on Broadway. It's Broadway. It's not on Broadway, but you know what I mean. It's it's literally theater. And if you were going to see a bad play, <laughs> you would walk the fuck out. And 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 that's one thing I like about Nick's management and Dolan. Believe it or not, he understands that. So people hate Dolan all they want, and that's fine. But guess what? The Knicks are the number one franchise in, in, in basketball. Why? Because he keeps his eye on the entertainment side of the game as well. And I'm not going to watch a product that's bullshit just because you want to see young players play. Like that Philadelphia tank shit, that is never going down here. However, speaking of Philly, Ben Simmons is the real deal, folks. I've been saying it. Ben Simmons is the real deal. <laughs> Embiid is nice, but Ben Simmons is going to be the... I think Ben Simmons is going to be the guy. Because I, I just, like I said, I worry about Embiid's health. If Embiid could be healthy, man, they got two studs. Doesn't mean they're going to win a championship, but they got two studs. And, 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 and Ben Simmons is that business, straight up. However... Our own Kristaps Porzingis is that business, too. Ennis Cantor is that business. He is that fucking business. And I tell people, because he is, he's a rock down low. And in the Eastern Conference, they have nobody. They have a couple. Don't get me wrong. Hassan Whiteside, who he didn't play yesterday. They have a few centers in the East. But I'm telling you, he's the perfect complement to KP. And that was missing. That dual threat, that ridiculous offensive rebounding that he does. You know, the dual threat of Porzingis on the outside and Cancer on the inside. Cancer getting those rebounds. He gets his handles on everything. He's a bull. He's a bull. Turkish bull. He's no joke. And I'm a big fan. And, and I said it ever since the Knicks got him. If you can go back on my podcast, I was like, yo, Ennis Cantor's no bum. He's a good player. He's a good player. He's good. And I told you about his, his player efficiency rating and his points per average. I mean, points per or minute per, points per 36. He's a really good player. Literally, when he's healthy, borderline star level. Yeah, he doesn't have the look of a star. And when Joe Kim Noah was at his best, he didn't have a look of a star either. He just was a hustle guy, a supreme hustle guy. But if you look at Kanta, come on, he's integral to what the Knicks do. He's integral to what the Knicks, what the Knicks do. So big shouts to him. He's balling. And, and I love the fact that he's going, at, he's going at LeBron and going at anybody. Because you know what? 
Fuck everybody else. This Nick's world, baby. Fuck everybody else. And you got to be like that. That's that Oakley spirit in him. Fuck y'all. <laughs> and that's, I love that. Fuck all that. See, y'all millennials ain't used to that shit. Y'all used to the nice guy shit. Like, well, you know, everybody's good. You know, uh, they my friend over here. This is my friend over here. Yeah, we friends. But right now, it's the season. So, fuck you. We, you know we boys. We boys. This is just shit. This is shit we do. But when we going against each other, fuck you. I've played against friends and hard files and everything. Sometimes they file you so hard, you look at them and you're like, yo, dude. Oh, okay. All right. We good. That's how we playing. All right. No problem. After the game, we get together, have some drinks, whatever, eat some shit, and it's over. But during the game, we ain't playing around. Niggas, motherfuckers getting bloody lips and everything. <laughs> everything. Fuck it. Let's go in. So anyway, it's good to see Ennis Cantor out there doing his thing. I'm, I'm very happy when he plays. You know, hopefully he doesn't have any more back issues. That might have been a scheduled rest because nowadays, again, Nick fans also don't don't be so afraid when you hear about Nick players out because of injuries and things like that. Don't be so afraid. And the reason why I say don't be so afraid is because. The Knicks, the, the, the NBA has made it where you can't rest people. You have to, they have to be injured, which is, mm, I understand the rule, but and there's a huge loophole to that rule. And the loophole is, all you got to do is say, is the person's hurt? All you got to do is say, he's hurt. The NBA is not going to go around checking everybody. The NBA is not going to go around saying, let me check his ankle. Let me check his foot. They're not going to do that. So there's still the same shit's going to happen. When you see a team has four games and five nights, their star player is going to rest for one of those nights or maybe two of those nights. That's going to happen, but they're going to say it's a twisted ankle. They're not going to say fatigue or shit like that. They're going to say it's a twisted ankle. And these old heads, oh, I used to play every game. Fuck you. That's why your motherfucker can't walk straight now. <laughs> That's why your ass got problems now. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers kill me, old heads, man. And I'm an old head, man, but I don't hate on the youngins, man. Let them do them. And then, you know what? If, if they making the game better and players can play long, I hear the same thing in baseball. Pitchers don't go nine innings. Fuck that. Is it in your, it's not in the team's best interest for that. Anyway, I digress. I digress. I digress. So... You know, we got some games coming up. We got some winnable games coming up. I'm not going to go through the list and stuff. You, you know, your guys can do that in the comments if you want. You can check the Knicks schedule. But uh, the Knicks have some winnable games coming up. They have some games they can absolutely win. They can go on a mini streak if they're healthy. They could. They should They should be over 500 after these next seven, eight games. Because there's some teams they're playing that... I looked at it, and, and they should beat those teams. I think they're better than most of those teams they're playing. There's a couple of teams in there they might lose to. They got Memphis. They could beat Memphis, but Memphis is still a prideful team. They still have Marcus All. So, you know, things like that. But they have a nice, well-deserved three-game rest that they need. They need that three-game rest, folks. I mean, three-game rest, three-day rest. So KP can get his faculties in order get his knees together and get his his feet together and get everything get all the soaking and and maybe kp needs to soak in wine like stoudemire (laughs) funny ass did but anyway you know i just wanted to do a little podcast holler at the people you know i didn't do too much analysis of the game that will be coming later i'll probably do another podcast before their next game on some catch-up shit (laughs) talk about what's been going on in nick land and around the league and stuff like that but folks This brings me to the end of the Knicks Home Court, episode number 76. I'm your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. Y'all have a good day. Peace.